You've heard of the Hindenburg, but have you heard of the Roma? Come walk with history and I'll tell you all about the Roma airship disaster from Norfolk, Virginia. But the tale is settling in spite of all that has been dumped. A grim note of impending tragedy. Hi, I'm Jen of Walk With History. I was a naval aviator and I actually flew in a jet just like this. This is the F-18. I flew in an F-14, but I was actually a helicopter pilot in the Navy. Today I'm going to talk about airship aviation and we're going to talk about the Roma. The Roma was an airship purchased by the U.S. Army in 1921 that had a disaster happen here in Norfolk, Virginia in February of 1922. And at the time, it was the biggest American aviation disaster to happen. The Roma is pretty much forgotten today because of the Hindenburg. And then when the Hindenburg crashes in May of 1937 in New Jersey, people pretty much forget about the airship disaster of the Roma. After the Hindenburg, the airship genre pretty much gets put on the back burner since they realize it's not really viable. When the Roma is purchased, it's purchased for $187,000. Today it would be about $2.7 million. So at the time, it was the largest semi-rigid airship in the world. Folk, we're at the corner of West Little Creek Road and Baylor Place. The marker was put here. It's right beside a fire department. And I think it was put here mostly because this is the, one of the fire departments that responds. Three fire departments respond that day. This is one of them. This is not exactly where the disaster took place. The disaster took place a little farther to the west from here. Norfolk International Terminal is located. That's where a bunch of shipping is taken in and out. But that's where the disaster took place and then the marker is put here. It's been 100 years since this disaster happened. Uh, February 21st, 1922. So the 100 year anniversary, someone has left flowers here as well. Killed 34 people of 45 on board. There were US Army military and civilians on board. 34 died, eight were injured, and three got away uninjured. All of the bodies were taken back to their hometowns to be buried. So Count Ferdinand von Zeppelin in 1900 is going to come up with this idea in Germany that you can drop bomb from airships. And that's a, makes sense, right? It makes sense. You can use hot air balloons. They're not going to be fast, but if you can get them high enough, you can actually use them in military activities. And so that's where the word Zeppelin comes from. That's the idea behind how these are used militarily. When the Hindenburg crashes, it basically shatters the public confidence in the airship flying error. And that's will pretty much end it. But however, in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, 1938, they're still flying an airship. Now in that show, if you notice how all the people are sitting, eating, that's what they thought the Roma would be like. They would be carrying 100 passengers, being able to use it for transatlantic travel. <laughs> No ticket. What do I mean when I say semi-rigid airship? Airships, I think, are the coolest thing. So when they say rigid airship, they mean strong frame, that's a Zeppelin. So when you hear someone say, what's a, what's a Zeppelin? Or come and ride my Zeppelin. Uh, in the Toy Story, he gets a Zeppelin. Wow, whoopee, a Zeppelin! What's a Zeppelin? It's a rigid airship, which means it has a rigid frame. The frame has been made heavy with material, and then the skin lays around that frame. <laughs> the Roma was semi-rigid. So what does semi-rigid mean? It means it has a, a strong keel. So the keel of the ship is rigid. So the bottom structure, the structures that held the people, that was all a hard structure. Don't you dare. So when you see footage of the burning, you see that hard structure is actually burning. 
the skin of it will be held up by balloons and that's how semi-rigid it has different kind of bladder balloons inside the blimp and that's what holds up a semi-rigid that's what she said <laughs> Third kind is called a non-rigid. That's a blimp. That's what we think of today. When you think of the Goodyear blimp, that's non-rigid. There's nothing inside of it that has a rigid frame. When you hear blimp, it's non-rigid. Semi-rigid, the Roma. Rigid is a Zeppelin, just like Randy gets in A Christmas Story. But the Roma had had issues even when they first bought it. So they had bought it. It had taken a maiden voyage for sale, the U.S. ambassador had rode it from Rome to Naples, back to Rome, 300 miles round trip, and they had then the U.S. had purchased it. Well, then instead of taking the transatlantic flight with it, they packed it up, and it rode on a ship over to America, came over to Langley, and when they unpacked it in Langley, it had mold on the airship's skin, and there had just been problems since then. They had flown it a couple times. The engines weren't working so well. It had four engines. They took taken off those four engines, put on six American engines, and again, this was another test flight that was happening on February 21st, 1922. So at the time, there are two types of air you can use in an airship. You can use hydrogen, which is, has great lifting, great lifting availability. It's readily available, but it's flammable. And then you have helium, the same lifting ability. That's what we use today, but it is rare and it's very expensive. And that's why hydrogen was what was used at first. Don't forget, we have Walk With History merchandise available. If you would like a sweatshirt or a shirt or a mug, check out the walkwithhistorygiftshop.com. And the Rome is taking a test flight from Langley to Norfolk, Virginia on February 21st, 1922. They leave at one o'clock and they start to make their way. 45 people on board, civilians and the US Army. They come over the Chesapeake Bay, head to Norfolk, and then what happens in this area, witness recall seeing that their rudder box fails. So what does that mean, a rudder box failing? Your rudder should be straight up and down, and the rudder box fails, it goes flat. That's what she said. Oh, no, 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 not that. And when Just, it goes come flat, on, you guys. the ship can no longer be steered. And so they, people, witness will, will see the nose pitch forward, so the bow pitches forward, and it heads towards the ground. It's at a thousand feet and it starts to head towards the ground. And as it's coming down, it hits power lines. And when it hits the power lines, the hydrogen inside the blip explodes. And that's where you get three fire departments fight the fire for five hours. And that's a fire, we're at a fire department right here. And I think that's another reason why they put the marker here, because this is one of the fire departments that respond. And witnesses, you know, recall seeing just, it's just mayhem. And even today, when they do construction in the area here, they still find nuts and bolts still in the ground from the road. Behind me is the Norfolk International Terminal. And this is more than likely the actual location of where the Roma disaster happened. Today, you're not able to access this. This is where all the cargo ships come in with the big cargo containers and they're offloaded and then put on trains and trucks to take and be taken around America. This is one of the biggest ports actually in America right now. But at the time, this was an army base. To get some dimensions of the Roma, the Roma was 410 feet long. It was 82 feet wide and then 92 feet high. It went about, top speed was 80 miles an hour, so they said they could go about a mile a minute. Hindenburg at the time was actually flighting the mail from Germany to America. That's actually what it was doing when it crashed into New Jersey. There is a marker to this disaster on the Norfolk International Terminal. We're gonna try to get to it. So we're at the gate of the Norfolk International Terminal. And as you come onto 
the area, there's a sign here for Crumley House. And this is where the marker or the tombstone memorial marker is for the Roma disaster. All it says is Roma disaster and it has the date and it's by that flagpole right there with a kind of a hedge around it, I think to adorn that marker. Now that marker, like I said, that tombstone marker has been moved from the actual location. There's no names on it. It's just very simplistic, but it's in that area right there. It says no trespassing, although this seems like a recreational type place. So much of what we say and do in naval aviation, in aviation in general, we say is written in blood. So our guidebooks, our textbooks, our learning manuals are written in blood. What does that mean? It means it's written in, in mistakes. It's written in things that people have done before us that they have learned the way not to do it. And then you learn emergency procedures or the right way to do it to avoid disasters. So the Roma changed the way airship aviation functions in America and in the world, changing the way the type of gas that's used inside the airship. And then after the Hindenburg crash, it pretty much changes the way airship aviation is utilized militarily forever. So the Roma disaster shouldn't be forgotten those people made a sacrifice to change the way we think and work in airship aviation and aviation in general. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you learning about the Roma and honoring those people. And I hope you learned something today about airship aviation. So thank you and on to my next Walk With History.